Hello there, my name is Ismaus and today let's look at how to make this kind of model in Blender. So creating this kind of model can be one of the hardest things to do, especially if you don't have the right tools. But thanks to the improvement to the closed simulations in Blender, we can do this with a minimum effort. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create the measurements I want to use. Here I'm getting these measurements from Gogo, so you can do that as well. And I'm going to create this from a plane. So and uh, using the spin tool, I can create that backward fold where the chair folds backwards. Just make sure you set the pivot point to where you want the angle of rotation to be or the spin rotation to be. And I'm also reusing that technique by using the spin tool to create that forward uh, bend as well. So I'm just reducing the, sub the subdivision just a bit and then pulling that, extruding that uh, forward. And now I'm adding a, sub a few subdivisions because I'm going to use the decimate modifier. So let me pause the time lapse for a second here just to explain how that is going to work for us. So, so if you have a mesh like this, let's add in a few subdivisions and see. And uh, go to the modifiers and add a decimate modifier. Or uh, you can go to unsubdivide and uh, change the iterations. And I will see that uh, every time you change uh, to, add, to an odd number, you will get this kind of uh, diagonal squares. Uh, which is which is going to give us the pattern we are looking for. I'm going to go back to the timeline, so I want to first explain to you the concept we are going to do here. So let's add a close simulator, a close property, and uh, we want to select a pattern similar to what the chair has, and uh, these diagonal squares are the best uh, for it. So something like that. Give this a vertex group. And then in the cloth properties, I can give this a pressure and also make sure to remove other gravity. I think the pressure is a bit too high, so let's reduce that to something like one. Remember we have created this vertex group, so we can use that as a pinning group in the shape properties. Now you see what we're getting. Because the borders of this mesh are loose, are we getting this kind of flappy thing? So I'm just going to select the outside borders as well and assign them to the vertex group and we see what we get. Now we, we're not getting a lot of details from this because we don't have enough resolution. Let me just turn on my wireframe. We don't have enough resolution for this. Uh, but what we can do is uh, go back to the close properties and play with the, if you go to the shape, you can play with the shrink factor. That should give us better folds, like you see there. And uh, if we add multi-resolution surface, multi-resolution modifier, make sure it's above uh, the cloth simulations. So if I subdivide this, see we get better resolution. So let's turn on the wireframe. And uh, if we subdivide this further, we should even get more resolution. So let's go back to the time-lapse and uh, continue with the chair. Okay, so I'm doing the same steps on the chair, adding the subdivision just for more resolution and then a decimate modifier and uh, change this subdivision to one so that I get those diagonal squares. Now I'm adding this plane and subdividing it and adding a wireframe. I'm not going to use it as a part of the chair, but I'm just using it to guide me on where I should make the selection of squares to get the pattern we want because it's very hard to just eyeball everything. So I'm just adding this pattern uh, this uh, grid uh, to help me make the selection on every intersection and uh, maybe in the middle. So. I'm also just duplicating this on the side so that I can do uh, that side as well and adding a selection inside those grid uh, so that I get a better pattern. Now you can get rid of those if you want and that uh, added those to the vertex group and uh, but I forgot this side so I just duplicated it and used a mirror modifier uh, to add uh, the same selection on the other side. Okay so now we have completed the selection and I've also added the border to the vertex group so that we don't have that flappy effect. just adding amount resolution to add more resolution to the details you 
you can see how using the right tools makes things much much easier because sculpting this can take you quite some time and you wouldn't get the pattern right uh, it, it would take you a lot of work to get the pattern right so i'm shrinking the holes just a bit uh, so that uh, we get a more shrinked in a perforated look like you see in the in the origin in the reference image there and i'm applying all the the cloth simulation uh, much resolution uh, so that I can just edit the mesh itself now I'm adding um, a material a simple principal uh, PBR material to the chair uh, you can get those these textures from assist0textures.com uh, you can get and uh, also added a decimate modifier to reduce on the resolution that I had on the chair And now I didn't I didn't like how small my chair was, so I added I deleted the left side of the chair and used the mirror modifier to expand it using and um, using the bisect tool. Now the rest is just repeating the same steps and uh, adding a few extra details. So I'm just adding the, uh, the back side by selecting one of the outside edge loops, uh, decimating it and extruding it down uh, so that I can get that uh, back side as well. I'm using the te same technique uh, for the forward hand area I'm just going to use the same modifier the same tricks are using the cloth modifier to create those details those wrinkles in the cloth modifier So I added subdivisions and then selected the out the out border, assigned them to a vertex group, which I'm going to use as a pinning group in the cloth modifier. And again, remove the gravity and uh, add the pin group and reduce the shrink factor and increase uh, the pressure to get uh, those wrinkles. Don't forget to download the project file from Patreon as a way to support uh, the channel and also get yourself uh, the chair if you don't want to make it your own. I'm just adding now a line detail that line detail you see on the reference image uh, by just converting one of the edge loops uh, that the boundary edge loops and uh, converting it to a, to a curve and giving it a bevel uh, to give it uh, that uh, line look uh, now the chair is almost done
Yes, so for those inside pins, I just use a sphere, a circle, and uh, filled it, and then just duplicated it around. Yeah, so since I didn't want to model the bottom part, I just reused one of my asset chair assets uh, because the details are not that different and uh, just matched it as the chair, gave it the same material and you can see it fits it uh, very nicely. I just had to remove parts of that uh, to get it to look or to fit it, to make it fit in nicely. Again, you can download the chair, uh, the finished chair, on my Patreon page or my CG Trader uh, page. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.